All right, so we're actually gonna be filming today and showing you what it takes to do a YouTube video. Um, so we're going through the whole thing. We're just, we're just, we've just done the, the really basic setup uh, and I'm gonna go through what we're using and how we do it so that you could also be a YouTube star. So we're actually using two, two microphones this morning. One is for your benefit so that you can hear me and Megan will have to splice that that video and audio together later in editing and this microphone that I'm putting on now is actually going to be for the video on this camera it would be too difficult to have all the audio well she she with this microphone it's already synced with that camera so she doesn't have to sync it with your video that you're watching right now, that's on this microphone, and we will have to sync that because it's on two different pieces of equipment, if that makes any sense. This, this isn't even on yet, right? No. So we do this piece so that the microphones can be hidden somewhat. We don't want cords going all over the place. You guys get a view into the non-sexy piece of video recording and editing. Okay, can you see any of my cords now? Okay, so we're good. The other important piece for me when I'm doing video is we have this sheet that Megan made up and it's so I remember to say exactly the same things the same way every single time. And that's how we get consistency in those videos that you guys watch each and every week. So one of the most important things that we have going on video is actually audio. So you have to make sure that your space is very quiet. Um, we have learned that the only time that it's possible to do this in our office is before our office people get into the office. So that's our, we have a hard stop at eight o'clock in the morning, or we can actually set up at five o'clock and start at five o'clock PM when everything shuts down. So it's really good to batch your video um, shoots. And so what I always do is I'd make a list of all the different videos that I want to create. Um, and so we try to get as many in, a, in an hour as we possibly can. Um, that way, all the setup is just done once. It'd be very inefficient to set up for just one video shoot, right? Yes. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, so today we've got to do, I've got a, a big list, um, but I have to do a video for Walls by Design. Um, just like we did the video for the cabinet procedures, mm -hmm. we want to do a video that we're going to use to send out to our customers um, when they sign a regular painting project. I was talking with Tyler and uh, like, well, we've got this one great video for, so what do we do when we're not painting cabinets? All right, um, let's do a test just so we can make sure the audio is all good. Okay, so here's my mark. Is this where you want me? Yeah. <laughs> You've set up. Do you want me to move over? Yeah. I'll just, I have another, I can just pull it, peel it. So this is called a mark, right? Yeah. Okay, so we always place a piece of tape on the floor where she wants me to stand, so I'm always standing in the same place. That's good. Is this good right here? Yeah. The other thing that I've noticed is I have to put some distance between me and the green screen when I'm recording, otherwise there becomes this little green haze. Um, we also, I don't think you can see it in the shot, but we've got... Um, are these any special lights? I don't think so. You don't think so? Like, just like the brand name maybe? Yeah. SD lights? They're SD lights. And so they come from either angle to, sh to really get rid of the shadows um, that can happen when you're doing video. So lighting is a little bit important. I would always say the audio is the most important thing. So when you watch videos on YouTube and the guys sound really far away, um, that's how I would sound right now shooting from this camera if I wasn't using this microphone. So I'm gonna take my mark and I'm gonna put it right here. And I just put it right in the middle of where I'm standing. 
So that way I always know this is where I have to return to. All right, so our first video, Megan. And Megan does a really good job of, of making notes and keeping track of where um, or what is being recorded um, so it's easier for her on the back end, right? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. All right, let's just do a little test for audio. So, test. So we're doing a test for audio right now. She is listening to me through the camera, making sure that the audio levels for her are correct because it's harder for her to, to change that in post. What kind of camera do we are we running? Sony XD cam. A Sony SD cam. XD. XD. Sony XD cam is the camera that we are recording with. Um, it's a little. It's a lot more beefy than a uh, a regular camcorder. Has a lot more functionality. I couldn't. We could probably turn the camera on uh, Megan, and she could tell you all about why this camera is better than, say, other cameras. But uh, you have to spend the money to when you're wanting to get that, that higher quality um, video and audio. And uh, I'm sure it could be done with just a, you could probably do it just with your iPhone. I mean, the quality of that iPhone video is pretty phenomenal. But um, we can take this and do shoots with it um, offsite as well. We've done that at markets. Does everything sound okay? Yes, sounds great. All right, so our first video is gonna be, um, we're going to talk about painting your house process. The wall spy design one? Wall spy design, yeah. We'll get that one out of the way. It's 7.03, so we have just under an hour. Ready? Yep. Oh, you know what? How did I start? The, I, how did I, do you remember how I started uh, that I one? Nick, what, Nick May from wall spy, wall spy Design. Uh -huh. And this is what we're going to talk about. Okay. Cool. Yep. All right. Hi, I'm Nick May from Walls by Design. Thanks for choosing us to, for your... Hi, I'm Nick May with Walls by Design. Thanks for choosing us for your painting project. Super excited. I just want to give you a little bit of heads up of what you can expect as we move forward. So you've just talked to the office. You've scheduled your appointment. The next thing is most likely you're going to be working with our interior designer and she's going to come out and work with you on picking colors. Now, I will tell you that she is not going to make the decision. You get to make that decision yourself. But she's going to guide you and give you some ideas and um, a little bit of direction so that it's not so she's gonna give you a little bit of direction and it will be a lot easier she'll come out with some samples um, we don't have big samples on all the colors but she does have about 25 larger samples so that it's easier for you to visualize now when you are deciding on that color what you want to keep in mind is that two things affect color light and what you see it with and so when you have that board um, and if she doesn't have a board of the actual color that you've picked out what I recommend is that you go down to Guyrie's and buy one of their little sample jars and they do have test boards that you can buy painted on there make sure you put two coats otherwise it'll be too thin and you want to move around that board in your house and look at it in different lights and in front of things that will still be in your house don't just put that color on the wall like most people do they little little paint swatch on the wall please don't do that it actually causes a couple of problems a you're seeing that color in a big sea of the color that we're gonna get rid of and so that taints that color and the other thing that it does is you could put it on too heavy and then it could be drippy and it can also telegraph through the paint that we are gonna be putting on so what happens if you do those little square blocks on your wall is we have to prime those spots and then we can paint. All right, so that's kind of the color process. Um, so after you meet with the interior designer, then you're gonna meet with our project manager and he's gonna come over, he's gonna have a checklist for you, he's gonna go over where we can 
So the next phase is we're going to have our the next phase is you're going to meet with our project manager and he's going to come over and he's going to go over all the kind of nuances of working in your house. Every house is specific. What time do we need to come to the house? How are we going to get in? Where are we going to clean equipment? And on and on and on it goes. And so you'll have a full understanding of how the project is going to proceed so that you're not wondering how are things going to work when the painters come to my house. The other thing that you're going to do at that meeting, which is super important, is you're going to sign off on colors. So by the time your project manager comes to meet with you, so by the time our pro so by the time you meet with our project manager, you definitely have to make that decision. I know it's tough, but you have to have a decision. If you don't have a decision the day of, please reschedule that meeting because Otherwise, it just puts a crimp in the whole process. And you're actually going to be signing off on a piece of paper that says, this is the color, and if I change after today, it costs me money. And the reason we have that is not to be mean, not because we're just trying to charge more money for our project, but it's to give you a hard stop and an understanding that when we change colors midway or after our paperwork has already been put into the process, things can be missed and problems can happen. So we really want to make sure that we're all on the same page from that point moving forward. Now I will tell you, a lot of times when he shows up, customers will tell us, hey, I've been thinking, can we add this room or these cabinets or, and the answer at that point is always yes. And I will tell you throughout the project, when the painters are there, sometimes our customers say, you know, I said I wasn't going to want to do the power group. And sometimes when the painters are there, and a lot of times when the painters are there, our customers will say to them, hey, I forgot to have the powder bathroom quoted. Is that something that you guys can add? And sometimes that answer is yes. But I have to tell you that if it's at the end of the project and we've already scheduled for our next project, then the answer most likely is going to be no. So think about those things right now. Are there any things on the list that you didn't ask us to do or are there any items on the list that you told the office that you didn't want to do but you really kind of want to do? Now when you talk to the gals in the office, they gave you a time period of when we were going to start. It would have been the week of September 30, it would have been something like the week of September 14th. Now make sure that you understand that this doesn't mean we are starting on the 13th. That means we are going to start that week. It could be Monday, it could be Friday. And what will happen is the Friday before your project happens, you will get a call or an email from the office and they will tell you exactly what day our and the Friday before your project is to start, the office will call you or email you and tell you your project is going to start on Tuesday or your project is going to start on Thursday. Now it's super important that you have all of your items ready for us when we come to paint your house. That means if you are moving furniture, make sure that the rooms that we've decided on starting in are moved. You don't probably have to move your whole entire house, but you will have talked to your project manager about which room or two rooms that the team is going to start in so that you don't have to clear out the whole entire house. Now, Every project you do need to move all of your personal items and that's going to include anything on the walls that you want to be removed. Uh, that is going to include smaller items like lamps, small tables, anything that my 65 year old mom could probably move by herself. So that is definitely things that you have to move. Now the furniture, you had an option on your bid whether we moved furniture or you moved furniture. So please make sure that everything is moved and ready for the guys when they show up that morning. Please don't wait for that morning to move everything. 
All right, now we're at the day that we're gonna actually start the project. And your team is gonna show up at the time or right around the time that was and the team is gonna start at the time that you've decided with your project manager that we're going to start that morning. Now it's not imperative that you are there to meet and greet the team, but it would be nice because your project manager is gonna be there and you've already met him and he can introduce you to the team Sorry, I didn't think through all of this beforehand as much as I probably should. Um, so the team is going to show up at the designated time that you and your project manager agreed to start the project. You don't have to be there, but it would be nice for the project manager who you've already met to introduce you to the team that's going to be painting your house. And from there, you are free to go. You've already gone over everything that we're gonna be doing in the project, so our project manager will be going through what we're painting, where we're painting, how we're painting, and so that is something that is off of your plate, and you can, <clears throat> and that's something that's off of your plate, and you can go off to work, or take the kids to school, or do whatever you need to do. Now fast forward to the end of the project. Your house is looking amazing and what you have to do is, now at the end of the project, you have an amazing new house and what we want you to do is to check over all of the areas that we've painted and you're going to do a walkthrough with your paint crew. So the lead painter that is there will be responsible for making sure that every so your lead painter will be responsible for doing all those touch-ups and so the project manager is not necessarily going to come back and do the walkthrough with you. Now the project manager will be stopping through the project periodically and making sure that quality level is, is so the project manager will be walking through the project periodically, making sure that we have the right quality level, that everything is prepped off and things are protected, and answering any questions for the team. Now at any point, if you have questions that your lead painter can't answer for you, you can always reach out to the project manager or to the office. Then after your project is complete, your lead painter is gonna have you sign off on a project completion form and they're gonna be free to go. Now don't forget, moving forward, we do have our free touch-ups for life program. And so every 12 months or so, the only two months we don't do the touch-ups is in November and December. So the rest of the year, as long as it's been 12 months, you can call and schedule for your annual touch-ups. So once again, I wanna thank you for choosing Walls by Design. I'm Nick May. I guess I won't be seeing you later. So, Thanks again for choosing Walls by Design. Again, I'm the owner, Nick May, and well, and how do I finish that sentence? We look forward to working with you until you end of it. Really Got it. Thank you. And again, I'm Nick May. Thanks again for choosing us, and we looking. So I'm. So again, I'm Nick May. Thanks again for choosing us, and we're looking forward to working with you. See you soon. Okay. All right. Cut. That's a wrap on that one video. How long did that take? That was painful at 15 minutes. All right, hopefully we'll speed these up. All right, um, dealing with problems, dealing with problem customers or upset customers. Okay, I'm gonna turn the volume on your mic pack down just a little bit. Am I a little hot? Um, that was fine, but I feel like when you go into the business, business fresh videos, you get a little bit louder. <laughs> oh, yeah? I get all amped up? Yeah, <laughs> but it just helps to turn them down just to be safe. Okay. All right. I think that was the right one, right? Yeah. Yep. Problem customers. 
Hey guys, I'm Nick May from The Business Rush. Today we're going to be talking about problem customers. Stay tuned. Nailed that one on the first one. I'm happy with it. A lot of times I do two or three takes, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. I spaced for a second. All right, so we've all had those calls. The customer calls, they're upset about something. And at this point, we don't know if it's an actual real problem or if it's something that can be solved very easily. Now, if you're interested in growing your business, and I think that you are, you could also listen to our podcast, The Business Brush, on either iTunes or Stitcher or anywhere podcasts can be downloaded. I'm Nick May from The Business Brush. See you next time. Cool. Done? 10 minutes. Awesome. I'm going to turn down your mic just Again? the tiniest bit. Did I? I <laughs> it was fine. I was Oh, and just FYI, these are Sennheiser wireless microphones. I tried the cheap ones. Don't go with the cheap ones. They break. They don't work. They're intermittent. Intermittent. All right. Did we do one on? Did we do one before on job costing? Hey guys, I'm Nick May from The Business Brush. Hey guys, I'm Nick May from The Business Brush. Today we're going to be talking about making money and every project. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Nick May from The Business Brush. Today we're going to be talking about making sure that you are making money on every project. Stay tuned. So thanks for watching the video today. Would you do me a favor? Would you please make sure that you've subscribed to this channel? Yeah, you, please. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, do it right now. Would you give me a comment? Are you tracking your profitability? And if you are, does it look good? <laughs> would you do me another favor? Just one more. Would you please share this on either Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn? It would mean the world to me. Hey, I'm Nick May from The Business Brush. Thanks for joining me. That was probably 12 minutes. We have 25 more, about. Yeah. Yep, about. Or until somebody walks in that door. <laughs> That's right. And I usually see her, so. All right, this one should be interesting. How to start a painting company your first 60 days. We didn't do that on the other one, right? Hey, I'm Nick May from The Business Brush. Today, we're going to be talking about how to start a painting business in your first 60 days. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Nick May from The Business Brush. We'll see you soon. That all makes sense? That was what? That was clean too, it was fast. Good. Have we talked about the five USPs for Walls by Design? I don't think so. Okay, so that's what this one is? The Walls by Design USPs? No, I'm gonna use it in the in the in the video. I'm gonna it's gonna be titled Selling Yourself and USPs. Ready? 
Hey, I'm Nick May from The Business Brush. Today, we're going to be talking about USPs. Stay tuned. All right, today is really talking about how to sell yourself and selling your USPs or unique selling propositions. At Walls by Design, we have five. Hey, thanks for joining me today. <clears throat> hey, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching this video. Would you do me a couple favors? Would you comment below? Would you make sure that you've subscribed to the channel? And would you please share this out on social media? Hey, I'm Nick May from The Business Brush. Thanks for watching. All right. If we could try to get one more in. Knock one out in seven minutes. Yeah. How many is that for today? With the Walls by Design one? Mm -hmm. So Walls by Design and five? And four. Okay, and four. All right, I don't have this one totally thought through, but we're gonna try it. You can't just fire someone. And you shouldn't. <laughs> you ready? Hey, I'm Nick May from The Business Rush. Today, we're going to be talking about firing. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Nick May from The Business Rush. Today, we're going to be talking about firing. Stay tuned. Do you hear something? It's like very distant. Right? I don't think I sound bad. Yeah, I don't hear anything. So we've all had that one employee that is just super frustrating. And all you want to do is just say, hit the road, Jack. You should play the clip, hit the road, Jack. Okay. Like, I don't know if you can find the video and you can hit the road. Jack. Um, anyways, that would be funny. Um, now, every state is different. In Colorado, it's a right to work state. Is that right? Is that right? A right to work. Yeah, right. yeah, right to work. Is what it's what it's called. I should say that again. So every state is different, but in Colorado, we're in a right to work state, which means the employee can leave at any point and the employer can fire or terminate at any point. Now, there are laws and things that you can't fire for and all sorts of things, but you can terminate a employee at any point. Now, there is a right way and a wrong way to terminate employment with, <clears throat> there is a, but there is a right way and a wrong way to do termination. And one of the biggest things I'm gonna talk about, now there's a lot of legal things and you can't discriminate, based on sex or gender or all sorts of things. But I'm gonna really talk about the right way to terminate an employee based on, shit, what is it called? I don't even know if I wanna do this today because I'm not really prepared and it sounds like it's probably. It's like a minefield kind of stuff. It is a minefield, let's not do it. Let's just wrap it. Four is good. I'm too tired. Sometimes that's what you do. You just go, you know what? There's too much to talk about. So anyways, so forget everything you just heard. <laughs> but anyways, I hope this was helpful. That's, um, this is all about doing video content on YouTube. Um, this is the system we use. I'm sure there's other systems. A lot of people, some people probably don't use a green screen. We like to use a green screen because it's a very controlled environment. Um, it's harder to do a setup in a space. You know, like if I were to go and do, even if I were to move this out into my office, I think it would be harder um, because you get distractions behind you. Um, you always want to control the lighting. Um, and this is a room that we know how to set it up every single time. So how long does it take you to set all this stuff up? So 15 minutes, so we'll tear all this stuff down so we can use this room in other ways, put the camera away, put the lights away, put the green screen away. Um, if we're gonna be doing 
um, more and more videos on a consistent basis. Some of the things we'll do is we'll leave our polls up and we'll just take the green screen part down um, and kind of just push the, the lights over. Um, that way it's just easier to set up. But we actually haven't recorded in how many weeks? Two? Like two or three, like two or three weeks because I was out of town. Uh, and so we cleaned everything up and then uh, we set it up. But even if you have to set up the whole thing, it, it only takes 15 minutes once you get a system down. Um, the other components to you know, doing this, this channel is um, the in and outs and the, what would you call that video transition thing in the front? Um, I don't know, like the intro motion graphics? The motion graphics, so we have those. Um, and you can actually find people on Fiverr to create those fairly inexpensively. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions on doing YouTube and doing videos, give me a comment below. Give me a question, contact me. Um, we're doing this one totally different than we do um, our normal short videos. So this is a very long video. It's probably the only long video we'll ever do uh, on this channel. So thanks for, if you've watched till, till now, wow, you are, uh, you're excited about doing video. And uh, I'm Nick May. Comment, share, do all that stuff we've, we've t you've heard me say about a million times today. And uh, we'll see you soon.